lie. Yeah. What do you call somebody who tells lies? A liar. What does that make you? A liar. So that's right. You're a, you're a liar by that standard. And so are all the rest of us. By the way, that's not a good person. Second question. Have you ever stolen anything ever in your life? Uh, okay, yeah, I got that. Yeah. What do you call somebody who steals? A thief. What does that make you? A thief. A liar and a thief. Oh my. Third question. You know what's wrong to commit adultery? <laughs> you can't get sick, so. Have you, have, all right. Let that one go for a second. Think about this. Have you ever looked at a woman with lustful, adulterous thought? Ever looked at pornography? I mean, I'm a guy, so yeah. Okay, so the answer is yes. Yes, sir. Uh, listen to what Jesus said. He said, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her already in his heart. So what does that make you? You knew that. A lie, a thief, adulterer. An at heart. Those are three of the Ten Commandments. The ninth, the eighth, the seventh commandment. If you stood before God today and he judged you by that standard, guilty or innocent? Guilty. I mean, guilty, I mean, guilty. you believe no in it. No question. I mean, if you Heaven innocent, or hell. Believe in it. Heaven or hell. Based on that. Well, if I believe in God, then hell. But... If you're guilty, you're going to end up in hell. Now, does that concern you at all? I mean, honestly, I think when you die, you die for real. Yeah. You're, you're gonna. You're, you're an eternal being. Your, your body dies and goes to the ground, but the soul returns to God, who gave it. So you're gonna answer to Him. You're gonna face God in judgment. You've broken His laws. The penalty's death and hell. You're on your way to hell, and it doesn't concern you. Yes or no? Not at the moment. Okay, but it will then. Maybe. Yeah, I, I, I think it would. Do you know what God did to save you from hell? He did something. What did he, he do? He, I mean, he died on the cross. He gave, his, he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who never lied or stole or had a lustful thought. He put, he put God first in everything that he did. And, went, and he was obedient even to the cross. And when he hung on the cross, it wasn't for himself. It was for your lies and thefts and adulteries and for mine and everybody else. And, and God has made the offer that if you will repent of your sins and put your faith in Jesus Christ, that God will grant you the gift of everlasting life. He'll take that payment and he'll apply it to Will's case and all Will's sins paid for and nothing preventing you from heaven. He'll come into your life. You'll be born again, born anew, and you'll have an inheritance in the kingdom of God. Wait, so I got a quick question. So how come good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people? I'm just trying to make Because we're point. living in a fallen world. And it's just, it's just I mean, as easy. I just easy. lost my mom on Christmas, you know. Yeah. So. It's just as easy to turn against God and do seek your own will and do things that hurt others. That's allowed too, or to turn to God and put your faith in Him. But it's coming to an end. There's a transfer taking place, and when Jesus Christ comes and returns, that transfer will happen, and the governments will be upon His shoulders, and and everything will be uh, set right. But are you in or are you out? Listen, you're probably going to die before then. When are you going to die? You got any idea? Hopefully not soon. I got a kid on the way, you know, so hopefully not soon. Are you married? No, you're not. So you're not married. You're living outside of the will of God. You got a kid on the way. You had sex out of marriage. You're in big trouble. You're going to answer for everything. But if you'll repent of your sins and put your faith in Jesus Christ, Read your Bible, obey what it says. God will lead you in a, he's not forsaking you and he's not throwing you away. He's saying, Will, come to me. This is, I'll show you the right way and I'll show you how to deal with all of this. But more than that, your soul is in jeopardy. And if you don't turn from your sin and put your faith in Christ before you die, and you don't know when that is, you'll end up in hell forever. And none of us want that. And certainly God doesn't. He loves you to death and he proved it by dying on the cross. Well, he's been with you your whole life. He brought you forth out of your mother's womb. There's not been a second that God hasn't been right beside you. You know, I heard a story once uh, of a guy who had a dream. And he, he, he saw his life before him. And he saw footprints. And he saw a second set of footprints walking beside him. And it was the Lord. It was the footprints of the Lord. But he noticed there was a couple of spots where there was only a single set of footprints. And he said, Lord, what happened there? Did you 
leave me? Uh, why did you forsake me? And he says, no, I didn't forsake you. Those are my footprints. I was carrying you through them. How many things has the Lord carried you through in your life that you're not even aware of? And you're going to see it on that day, and you'll be sobbing with tears of gratitude and gratefulness, or sobbing with tears of anguish and turmoil that you tossed it all away for nothing. It's all temporary. Today is a day of salvation. Today, salvation has come to this house. That's what Jesus said to Zacchaeus when he opened his heart to God and, he, and it invited him in. That's what you need to do. Read your Bible, obey what it says, and make a final commitment. Turn your life over to Christ. Do it today, because you may not have tomorrow. I can speak to you. You want to say something? Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. Well, appreciate you getting up there. It's, it's hard to do with all these people around, and especially to be honest about your own sins. I heard you do something when Scotty was talking to you, and it was like a little bit of desperation. You said you didn't believe in God? Yeah. You weren't genuinely serious about that, were you? Or were you just sort of thinking, uh, I don't believe no, in God? No, I really, I really don't believe in God. No. Do you live in a house? Yes, sir. What proof is there that it was a builder? Tell me. I mean, I paid the construction worker myself, you feel me? The video will continue in a few seconds, but I wanted to remind you to please subscribe to our channel and click on the notifications bell. And don't forget to like, comment, and share. Thank you. If you didn't pay the construction worker, you wouldn't know your house was built. Come on. You know there was a builder because buildings don't build themselves. You look at the building on the corner, you know there was a builder. Even if you died 100 years ago, you know there was a builder because buildings don't build themselves. Get it? Paintings don't paint themselves. Every painting you look at, you know, you don't believe, you know there was a painter because paintings don't paint themselves. Okay? Stay with me. This is simple logic. A child can understand it. Flowers, birds, trees, the sun, the moon, the stars, puppies, kittens, ponies, the seasons, the fruits, the marvels of the human eye, the human body. All of it has design and shows you there's a creator. You know, without excuse, you know in your heart God exists. But we run to atheism because it gets rid of our moral responsibility. Amen. You know what the Bible says? Will. This is what it says about human beings. It says your natural mind is in a state of hostility towards God. It's in the book of Romans. Do you think you're hostile towards God? I mean, I wouldn't say hostile. I just don't believe it. I think you're hostile. Let me tell you how I know you're hostile. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Who has it? Yeah. Okay. That's hostility towards God. You're using God's name as a cuss word. He gave you your child, even though you had it out of wedlock. He gave your eyes, your brain, your ears to hear good music, taste buds to enjoy good food. He lavished his goodness upon you. You can feel the warmth of the sun he made. And instead of being grateful and saying, God, thank you for giving me life, you've used his name to express disgust. Slam thumb in the door. You could say a filth word beginning with S or the name of God or Jesus Christ. That's blasphemy. It's punishment by death in the Old Testament. And it, it's evidence and natural mind is in a place of hostility towards God. This is exactly what that verse says. The carnal mind is an enmity towards God. Men says this. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. The hostility you have towards God is because of its moral government. You don't want God telling you what to do because you love your pornography. You love your por fornication. Am I wrong? And you know it's wrong, and you say, God, I don't want you near me because I know you condemn it. And we're saying it's all going to come out in the light on Judgment Day, and you need to get right with God before that happens. Well, let your imagination go for a minute, and I want you to be real honest, okay? All right. Imagine we had an 80 inch, 80 inch screen here, and we had your thought life for the past three months the highlights and the lowlights. And we're going to let everybody see exactly what you think about. You would go, whoa. Uh, that would be a little shameful. But oh, that's yeah. what God has seen. He made your brain. He sees what you think. He's not blind. He's not deaf. And every time you sin, you've stored up his wrath. And that evidence is going to come out on the day of judgment. And that's why we're saying you need a savior, someone who can wash away your sins so you can be clean in his sight. The Bible says this when Jesus was walking toward John the Baptist. John the Baptist said this, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. He died on the cross so our sin could be washed yeah. away. If you know anything about Jewish Passover, 
What happened during Passover is they put the blood of a lamb on the doors and anyone who stayed in that home was free from death as it passed over. That's why they celebrated Passover. If you give your life to Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, His blood protects you against death. It has no hold on you if you belong to the Savior. But if you don't, you are death dominion. It has a seal upon you. And as you get older, you'll slowly die. It's appointed a man once to die, and after this, the judgment. And it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Better to fall under the face of the sun than fall in the hands of the living God. At least that would kill you real quick. You're going to be punished for your sin. And God doesn't take any pleasure in the death of the wicked. So today, don't harden your conscience. You know what your conscience is? It's a judge on the courtroom of mind, that little voice. And you know what? It's annoying because it talks to you when you do things that are wrong, morally wrong. But if you don't listen to it, you're like someone who takes the batteries out of a smoke detector because he doesn't want it to alarm him. That's a dumb thing to do because the smoke detector is there to protect you. So you keep good, fresh batteries. So have a tender conscience before God. Just say, God, show me as I am in your eyes. Let me see exactly what you see when you see me. And if you've got a tender conscience, you'll hang your head in shame and say, I deserve hell, but God's offering me heaven. I deserve death, but God's offering me life. Does this make sense? Yes, sir. You got to think about this? I think about it. Yes, sir. Please do. We really care about you. Think about our motive. You think it's fun doing this? We've both got beautiful wives. i got a beautiful wife and a nice dog. I'd rather be with both of them than with you. But I'm here because I love you. No other reason. I care about you, okay? Okay. You have a Bible at home? Yes, sir.